Good happy Monday morning, January 11, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Monday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. It's time to rise and shine and get this Monday morning off to a good start. So sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, and enjoy this Monday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King, where we have a little bit of everything for you in this program. First step, we're going to kick it off with your COVID-19 dashboard from John Hopkins University in Medicine. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. Your global cases are 90,295,028. Your U.S. cases are 22,409,130. Your global deaths are 1,935,060. Your U.S. deaths are 374,329. That is a look at your COVID-19 dashboard from John Hopkins University and Medicine. Now let's get to your other news. Impeachment article has 200 co-sponsors, U.S. Rep. The draft citing in sediment of insurrection could be introduced today. President Donald Trump is slated to hand over control of the White House to President-elect Joe Biden in 11 days. We can tell you that Rep. Selenden just passed 200 co-sponsors on the article of impeachment. House moves closer to second Trump impeachment. We are calling for the vice president to respond in 24 hours, Pelosi wrote. Democrats will take step this week in the House to remove President Donald Trump, beginning with a call for Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said in a letter to Democrats Sunday, the resolution would call on Pence to immediately use his powers under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment to convene and mobilize the principal officers of the executive departments in the cabinet to declare what is observance to a horrified nation that the president is unable to successfully discharge the duties and powers of his office. If Republicans block the move, Democrats will vote on the bill on Tuesday and impeachment later this week. We are calling for Vice President to respond in 24 hours, Pelosi wrote regarding Pence in the 25th Amendment. Democrats will hold a private caucus call at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Fire's actions on the floor will take place at 11 a.m. on the House floor. And we will be sure to keep you updated on all of this information. In below to Trump's golf PGA strips major championship from Trump's owned course. The 2022 PGA championship will no longer be held at Trump's Bedminster golf course. 
as he faced a lonely end to his presidency. Donald Trump learned Sunday evening that in the wake of last week's riot at the U.S. Capitol, he has lost one of the relationships he values most, his partnership with Professional Golfers Association. While the embattled president has been hunkered down to try and preserve his political career, the PGA of America said one of the golf four major championship tournaments announced that it plans to move its 2022 PGA Championship away from Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Six California inmates escape jail using homemade rope to descend walls, police say. Police are searching for the men, including one who is charged with murder. Police in Central California are on the hunt for six men they say escaped from a jail late Saturday night by scaling down its walls from the roof with a homemade rope. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into weather. Let's take a look at your weather across the United States for this Monday. And here's a check of the weather across the United States for this Monday for all of you. As you can see, way up in the Canadian border, you're going to see some snow. And then all along here is all dry and clear. And then down here by Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Atlanta, and part of Florida, you're going to see some regular rain. And then up here, Tennessee, Alabama, you're going to see some mixed precipitation. And then otherwise, it's all dry along here and all along here, all dry. And a little bit of rain down here. And then way up here in Washington State in Seattle, in Vancouver, you're going to see some mixed precipitation with some rain. And then down here... Um, you're going to see some rain and thunderstorms. Otherwise, that is a look at your weather across the United States for this Monday. And we're going to switch gears now. Advice for couples struggling with too much togetherness during the pandemic. Let's take a look at that video from the Today Show. Let's get some advice. I was here more often, I wasn't on the road, and we had to kind of get into a new rhythm. Married for 32 years, Steve and Laura Peterson went from being apart three weeks each month because of his job to being together at home constantly. I didn't have to tell anyone what errands I was going to be running. When I leave now, he's like, where are you going to go? What time are you going to be back? Are you going to bring lunch? After several months, the Petersons say they found a new rhythm. But a recent survey found one in five married or partnered Americans reported fighting more than before the pandemic. And 30% said they were more annoyed with their partner. Is the pandemic something that could make or break a relationship? Absolutely. The Psychiatrist Sue something. Varma has seen a rise in couples seeking advice for how to rekindle their romance. She says things that were minor issues before the pandemic can morph into major ones when you're together 24-7. They're bickering, they're fighting. Who's going to do what? Just because we're spending more time doesn't mean we're actually having more fun. Well, what are the top complaints you're hearing from couples? People are stuck at home and they're finding that there are more dirty dishes, uh, there's more dirty laundry, uh, there's homeschooling, the kids are at home. So this balance between rest and relaxation um, versus the work that needs to be done, it's a very delicate balance. But it's not all bad news. 71% of unmarried couples say their relationships have gotten more serious since the pandemic began. Malik and Kelsey met last summer and married this summer. They say coronavirus and quarantining cemented their connection. It's really given us an opportunity to kind of 
experience a lot of relationship in a, in a shorter period of time. What do you do when challenges come up? We talk, um, and that's not always easy, but there's, there's no other way to get through it. When you do fight, how you fight is far more important than what you're fighting about. Dr. Varma says you can keep connected by praising and appreciating your partner, finding time daily for fun and relaxing conversations, and scheduling time for real togetherness, whether it's a walk or a date night. What are some things that you've learned that have helped you stay connected? Just being tolerant of one another and recognizing what each person's experience is of this pandemic. With COVID chaos putting a strain on couples, Dr. Varma says accepting your partner and giving grace to each other can keep your union strong. One of my favorite African proverbs is, before you get married, keep both eyes open. After you get married, keep one eye closed. Let go of the little things. Yeah, don't sweat the small stuff. Dr. Varma also says each person should make self-care a priority to de-stress and seek your own personal growth because that will help you both bring your best selves to the relationship. Yeah, I think we all need a bunch of different relationships in our lives. I feel like we're kind of pinned into mm -hmm. one, but how do you know if you have a real problem like you really need an expert as opposed to just we'll ride this one out and it'll be fine in a couple of weeks yeah dr varma says there's been a lot of research on this and it shows that there are four things to look out for criticism contempt defensiveness and stonewalling so if you check, are check, check, check. Yeah. oh gosh okay. no, yeah. <laughs> if you're picking on your partner you're feeling angry or resentful not, and you're getting defensive yeah write it down uh those what are the flags flags. <laughs> So that's when you should consider getting some help, Al. You and me, maybe. What about snoring? Is that on the list? Yeah. <laughs> if it isn't, it should be. I was sleep divorced before the pandemic. Yeah, that's right. You that's Mike and I separately. We've been social distancing for years yeah. before it was Preparing cool. for it. Um, well, what kind of, this is a funny question, because they, you know, what activities could bring you closer together? But isn't the problem, like, do you want to be too closer much, together? Isn't together. the point? It's too so much. So maybe activities that don't just bring you closer for quantity of time, right? Yeah. But quality, like really focusing on each other and finding ways to see a new dimension of your partner, right? So find a way to experience awe together. One way is just get outside, right. go see some nature. That apparently really does boost your mood. Um, also, if you're not going to go see a counselor, maybe that's not in the cards for you, listen to a podcast together or mm. read a relationship book, then talk about it. You really, it's like an assignment for, for yourself as a couple. Men love like that when you're like, yeah. see this relationship. They no. uh, what could go wrong there? We, we prefer to drink and yell. Okay, that may, how's that working out for you? Uh, what, it's, no, I'm kidding. But what, uh, no, you're not. What, what are some signs that I should look for in Siri? I mean, a uh, partner. <laughs> No names, not naming names, but Dr. Varma says if your partner is suddenly agitated, irritable, having trouble sleeping, and it's not because of the fourth baby, it's not because of the fourth baby, those could actually be signs of real anxiety or depression. That's when you might want to reach out, check in, and say, hey, do you need some help? We joke. Uh, can I just yeah. say, though, like, don't you think laughter is the best? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, it's you don't have le Levity's been a big thing in, for us yeah. in our relationship, oh. just to laugh at the moment. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I mean, no matter how things get, like, yeah. if Mike said, he's so funny, if he says something funny, I'm just like, yeah. oh, yeah. I love you all over yeah. 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 Physical release. Yeah, yeah. That a breaks a lot of the ice. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So get a joke Thank book. Uh -huh. Or a funny movie. Yeah. By the way, Jenna picks up on this tomorrow with a look at how people are finding love during the pandemic. So mm. check that out. Okay. okay, and there you go on that video. Good tips there. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into entertainment news. In today's entertainment news, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry quit social media for good. Let's take a listen to that video from Access Hollywood. Life comfortably. Have Meghan Markle and Prince Harry quit social media for good? The royal couple isn't expected to make a return to platforms like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram anytime soon, if ever, according to the Sunday Times. A source told the British paper that Meghan and Harry are focusing their public personas elsewhere as they continue endeavors like their Archwell Foundation. The insider reportedly said that it's, quote, very unlikely that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will use social media for a personal or professional reason going forward citing hate as the primary reason. On World Mental Health Day in October, Meghan and Harry opened up about the impact of online negativity, sharing on the podcast Teenager Therapy, 
why the former suit star feels especially vulnerable when it comes to cyberbullying. I'm told that in 2019, I was the most trolled person in the entire world, male or female. Now, eight months of that, I wasn't even visible. I was on maternity leave or with a baby. But what was able to just be manufactured and churned out, it's almost unsurvivable. That's so big, you can't even think of what that feels like. Because I don't care if you're 15 or you're 25, if people are saying things about you that aren't true, what that does to your mental and emotional health is so damaging. Following their decision to step back as senior royals in early 2020, Meghan and Harry said goodbye to their popular Sussex Royal Instagram account, telling fans in a farewell post that they wanted to take time to determine how they can best contribute as priorities and practices shifted globally amid the coronavirus pandemic. Writing in part, while you may not see us here, the work continues. So far, they've made good on their promise. Though Meghan and Harry are keeping a relatively low profile, they're still making sure fans are updated on their latest projects, and they recently dropped a special glimpse into their family life. Earlier this month, the couple's one-year-old son, Archie, sent adorable New Year's well wishes on his famous parents' Spotify podcast. You can speak in turn. Archie, is it fun? Hi, fun. <laughs> After me. Ready? Happy? Oops. Happy? New? New. New. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Very cool. Arnold Schwarzenegger condemns the Capitol riots. Let's take a listen to that video from Access Hollywood. As an immigrant to this country, I would like to say a few words to my fellow Americans, to our friends around the world about the events of recent days. Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't holding back his strong reaction to the Capitol riots. The former California governor reflected on the violent event and its fallout in a passionate video posted to his YouTube channel and social media platforms on Sunday. Schwarzenegger, a Republican, shared with viewers how seeing President Trump supporters storm and breach the U.S. Capitol in an attempt to thwart the certification of President-elect Joe Biden's electoral college victory reminded him of historic political events in his native Austria and growing up in post-World War II Europe. I grew up in Austria. I'm very aware of Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass. It was a night of rampage against the Jews carried out in 1938 at the Nazi equivalent of the Proud Boys. Wednesday was the day of broken glass right here in the United States. The broken glass was in the windows of the United States Capitol. But the mob did not just shatter the windows of the Capitol. They shattered the ideals we took for granted. They did not just break down the doors of the building that housed the American democracy. They trampled the very principles on which our country was founded. Growing up, I was surrounded by broken men drinking away their guilt over their participation in the most evil regime in history. Not all of them were rabid in their Semites or Nazis. Many just went along, step by step, down the road. It all started with lies and lies and lies and intolerance. So being from Europe, I've seen firsthand how things can spin out of control. Five people died in the January 6th attack, including a U.S. Capitol Police officer, and dozens more have been arrested. Trump's accounts on Facebook and Twitter are now suspended indefinitely, and Schwarzenegger explained why he believes history won't look kindly upon his presidential legacy. President Trump is a failed leader. He will go down in history as the worst president ever. The good thing is that he soon will be as irrelevant as an old tweet. But what are we to make of those elected officials who have enabled his lies and his treachery? I will remind them of what Teddy Roosevelt said. Patriotism means to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president. Schwarzenegger went on to express encouragement for Biden ahead of his January 20th inauguration, sending well wishes to the president-elect for success in healing and uniting the nation. 
The action star's children, Patrick Schwarzenegger and Katherine Schwarzenegger Pratt, praised their famous dad on Instagram, sharing love and support for his personal message. The 73-year-old is far from the first celebrity to weigh in on the unprecedented events of the past week. Pink, Chris Evans, Meghan McCain, and more stars on both sides of the aisle have taken to social media to share their thoughts. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your celebrity birthdays for today. Let's see which celebrities are celebrating a birthday today. And happy birthday to all of these celebrities. We hope they have a wonderful birthday and a wonderful day. And that's going to do it for this Monday edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. Thank you for joining us for this Monday morning for this edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you back here later on today with more news coverage. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.